everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. Today we're talking about perfect squares or perfect square factoring, factorization, heard it all. So this is not talking about like five squared, that that would be a perfect square. When we're talking about factoring, it's when we have something like say x plus one and we square it. We have that binomial and it turns into a quadratic, something that begins with x squared. And it means the same as x plus one times x plus one. So we're going to cover what happens when we multiply these together, what sort of pattern it creates, and how to go back and forth, how to get that quadratic and go back to this factoring, or how to go from this to the quadratic very simply. Now, the odds are when you start this, you're going to see something like this in your book, or your teacher's going to present it, that a plus b squared is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Now, depending on how you view math and how you think, this either go, oh, okay, I can follow this pattern very simply, or your eyes glazed over. Just different people interpret things different ways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put real numbers in this and really show you what's going on so that if if you are someone who this your eyes just glaze over when you're presented with a, a formula to memorize, I want you to understand what's going on behind it. So let's say if I had x plus 3 squared, that is the same as x plus 3 times x plus 3. And when I have two binomials to multiply, I'm going to use FOIL, or binomial multiplication. I'm going to multiply the first terms. x times x is x squared. I'm going to multiply the outside terms. x times 3 is 3x. I'm going to do the inside terms. 3 times x is, again, 3x. And then finally, the last terms. 3 times 3 is 9. And then I have my two like terms. I'll zoom out just a little bit that I need to combine those like terms. And I get x squared plus 3x plus 3x is 6x plus 9. Now, if I had not done this multiplication, if I had just used this formula, what would my answer have been? I would have looked at this x plus 3 and I would say, okay, so if a is the first one, then that means that's x. Change my colors here. And then b is my second one, so that is 3. Okay, so that means my first term should have been a squared, or in this case, x squared. What's x times x? x squared. All right, that checks out. Then my middle term should have been 2 times a times b. Okay, so 2 times x times 3. 2 times x is 2x. 2x times 3 is 6x. Well, sure enough, that was my middle term. And then finally, it should have been b, or in this case was a 3, squared. And down there, 3 squared is 9. So you see what's happening. This first x is getting multiplied by itself. I'm going to erase these little lines because this is getting very messy. There we go. So this first x is being multiplied by itself, which gives me my x squared. That last number 3 is getting multiplied by itself, or 3 squared. And then I'm getting a 3x and a 3x. So I have two pairs of 3 times x. So that where that's where the 2 times a times b comes from. Okay, so that's why this formula works. Let's see if we can use it. I'm going to erase it, see if we can recall it from memory. Erase, erase, I should have just selected all and deleted. Wouldn't that have been easier and smarter? It would have been. Tisk tisk. Right, so let's try it with something with a number in front of it, like 3x minus 5. And we're going to use that same pattern. We're going to take our first term, which in this case is 3x, those go together, and we're going to square it. Be careful with this. This does not mean 3 times x squared. This means if we say 3x squared, we mean 3x squared or 3x times 3x. So we would do the 3 times 3 gives us 9x times x gives us x squared. So that's my first term. I'm going to go ahead and do my last term because that's pretty easy. I think it's easier to do the first and last to begin with, but 
negative 5 squared is negative 5 times negative 5, which becomes a positive 25. In a perfect square, this is always going to be positive. Always. Then for our middle term, it is 2 times a times b. 2 times 3x times negative 5. That negative, whether it's positive or negative, it sticks with that b. Make sure to include it. All right, so 2 times erase my five. Two times three X is six X. Six X times negative five is negative 30 X. And there I followed my pattern and I have my answer and I didn't have to write out three X minus five times three X minus five and then do foil. Now this depends on your teacher and your book and whatever sheet worksheet that it is you're working on. Sometimes they will tell you just to use that you know, where it's the A plus B squared and shows the pattern and just to write your final answer out like this, some, they want you to write out the whole 3X minus 5 times 3X minus 5. Whatever they tell you to do as far as showing your work, please do it. You do not want to get points taken off when you know the right answer. That's just miserable. No one wants to get back and like, you didn't show your work. No, that's a horrible feeling. We've all been there and it's awful. So just do whatever they ask you in that regard. Now let's see about going backwards. Let's use what we've just learned with that pattern and go backwards. If we're given something to factor, a quadratic to factor, let's see if we can figure out how we can use this pattern to easily factor it. So let's say I am told that this is the pattern. Excuse me, that this is the quadratic they want you to factor. So when we started with the binomial and we were going into this quadratic, we said we would take this first term and square it. So we're going to undo that. We're going to go backwards. So in algebra, we want to undo things. We do the opposite. What's the opposite of squaring something? It's square root. So what is the square root of x squared? That is x. There's my first term. Then I look at the last one. 25. What's the square root of 25? It is 5 because it's the same thing. Remember, I took this and I squared it to get there. So to take this and go back, I have to square root it. Same principle. Okay. Notice I did not write positive or negative because even though this is a positive 25, the square root of 25 could be positive or negative 5. I don't know yet. How you figure this out is by looking right here. Here, you look at that sign. Whatever that sign is, that's the sign that goes right there. In this case, it's a negative, so the negative goes there. Now let's check and make sure this works because we did the square root to find out that one, square root to find out that one, and we used that sign to figure out what goes there. But let's double check that middle term. We said the middle term should be 2 times my first term, that's x, times my last term, negative 5. 2 times x is 2x. 2x times, times negative 5 is negative 10x. That checks out. We've done it. We have found it. Now, there, um, there's a couple of wrinkles they're going to throw your way. I guarantee it. So the first wrinkle that they might throw your, way, throw your way would be something like this. If they said 50x squared minus 40x plus 8, and it's on the perfect square homework or worksheet, and they're like, use perfect squares to factor this. And you're like, um, last I checked, 50 is not a perfect square and neither is eight. What is going on? You told me, you told me to square root it and then I would get my, and it's not square rooting. You lied. No, I didn't lie. They're just being tricky. You know how they love to do that. What they want you to do first, and honestly, this should be your first step for any factoring, is to see if there is a greatest common factor that you can pull out. Always do that first. It will make your life so much easier. So in this case, I'm looking at 50, negative 40, and 8. I know that they are all even. 2 goes into all of those. So I'm just going to pull out 2. And what happens when I do that? I get 2 times 25x squared minus 20x plus 4. Is there anything further that I can factor out? Did I pull the greatest common factor? Yes, I did. Because this one, 25, its factors are 1, 5, and 25. And 5 and 25 do not go into 20 or 4. So 2 is the biggest. That's good. 
And looky here, I've got a 25 x squared. Since 25 is a perfect square and x squared is a perfect square, together they make a perfect square. And four is a perfect square. So, all right, now we've got those squares and we can use our pattern. So the same thing, remember to bring this two. This is the big thing. Do not forget about that two, especially when it's just factoring, not when it says equal to zero, that's another beast. But just when you're saying factoring like this, do not lose that two. Make sure it stays and is in your final answer. All right, so I'm going to set up my little pattern. I go, okay, first term, what's the square root of 25x squared? I do first the square root of 25, that's 5. Then the square root of x squared, that's x. And I go over and I look at my 4. What's the square root of 4? It's 2. And my sign, I look here before that middle term, it's negative. All right, so to double check, I'm going to say 2 times a times b. 2 times 5x is 10x. 10x times negative 2 is negative 20x. Ding, ding, ding. I've got my answer, and that is my final answer. 2 times 5x minus 2 squared. So always, when you're given these sort of problems, when they're, um, because you will get to a point with factoring where they just tell you, factor however you seem, you know, however you see fit, whatever you think is best. In those cases, again, first pull out that greatest common factor to make that um, the quadratic simpler, and then always look at those first and last terms to see if they are perfect squares. If you see a 9, a 16, a 25, a 100, if you're seeing a 4, you're seeing those perfect squares in either the first or last position, I almost wrote 47, geez, 49. <laughs> if you see that, then the first thing I want you to do is to think, hey, maybe this could be a perfect square and look a little deeper and see if it fits that pattern that we discussed. It will save you a lot of time and they're looking for you to know that about those perfect squares and to recognize them. Be sure to check out the new somewhat sarcastic designs in my store. And if this was helpful or useful in any way, please like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.